22. How the Devil Mocks Humanity by the Art of Magic Therefore, worse things than this appeared, for humans through the devil began to be crazy for magic arts, so that now they see and hear the devil, and he speaks to them deceitfully and shows them one sort of creature in their scrutiny as if it were another. It is not my will to say how the first seducers were taught by the devil, so that now those who seek him see and hear him, but they are very guilty in this wickedness of theirs, for they deny me, their God, and imitate the ancient seducer. O oh, human! I have sought you by the blood of my son, not in malicious iniquity, but in great justice, but you forsake me, the true God, and imitate him who is a liar. I am justice and truth and therefore I admonish you by faith and exhort you by love and recapture you by penitence, so that, though you are bloody in the pollutions of sinners, you may yet rise from your fall into ruin. But if you despise me, understand the comparison in this parable which says, 23. Parable on this subject A certain lord who had many servants under him gave each of them a full set of warlike arms, saying, Be upright and useful, and renounce tardiness and indolence. But while they were marching with him, these servants saw beside the road a certain impostor, inventor of evil arts and some of them, being deceived, said, We wish to learn this man's arts. And casting away as people are going along the way of truth disposed to walk in the divine commands, they are met by many temptations for the devil, the seducer of the whole world and the wicked contriver of many vices, waits for them not in the way of truth but in deceptive ambushes. Therefore, certain of them, who love injustice more than right, are seduced by the devil and are more eager to imitate the vices of the ancient seducer than to embrace the virtues of God. And that intellect, which they ought to have used for the divine commandments, they twist to the vices of earthly iniquity and submit themselves to the devil. The doctors, as their companions, cite to them often the sacred scriptures, reproaching them for their deeds and loudly asking why they follow the devil's illusions and bring down divine vengeance on themselves. But they almost always deride these admonitions, claiming that they sin in few things and do not offend God by pride at all. Therefore, when they persevere in that obduracy, they receive the divine sentence for these servants of iniquity are asked why they suffocated their God-given intellect and why they preferred the deceptions of the ancient seducer to loving their creator, whom they should actively have served. Thus they too are despised for devilish illusions according to their works, since they refuse to serve God, and they are forced to consider what their wicked seduction has profited them since, thus cast out, they incur damnation because they have disregarded the divine precepts and tried to follow the devil rather than God. For I do not will that humans should despise me, when they ought to know me in faith for if they reject me to examine a creature subject to them, thus imitating the ancient seducer, then I permit them to achieve the desires of their hearts both as to the creature and as to the devil and thus they learn by experience how much the creature they have adored will profit them, and what the devil whom they have followed will give them. 24. Humans go out of the world whenever their salvation and use is complete. And, O oh foolish humans, why do you scrutinize a creature about the length of your life? For none of you can either know or avoid or get through the period of his life except as I decide he will live for, O oh human, when your salvation is complete in both worldly and spiritual matters, you will leave the present world and pass on to that which has no end. For when a person has such fortitude that he burns for me more ardently than other people, and, aware of the earthly dregs of stinking sin, is active in avoiding the snares of the ancient serpent, I do not take his spirit from his body before his fruits have fully ripened with sweetest fragrance. But if I find one who is of such frailty that in pain of his body and terror of the evil lurker he is too delicate to their arms, they ran to him. The others said to them, What are you doing, imitating this impostor and provoking our Lord to anger? And they answered, How does this harm our Lord? But their Lord said to them, O wicked servants, why have you thrown away the arms I gave you? And why is it dearer to you to love this vanity than to serve me, your Lord, whose servants you are? Go then, follow this impostor as you desire, for you do not bear my yoke, I take him away from this world before his soul wasting away in weakness, begins to dry up. For I know all things. But I want to caution the human race with all possible justice, so that no person can excuse himself, when I strike them with a sentence of death as if they were about to die, when in fact they are to live for a long time yet, 
I warn and exhort people to do justice. For no one can have or make for himself any time unless I see usefulness in him and by my will allow him to live as indeed Job testifies, when he says. 25. Words of Job on this subject. You have appointed his bounds, which cannot be passed Job 14.5. Which is to say, you who are above all and foresee all before it comes to pass have indeed established in the secret of your majesty the bounds of human life, so that they cannot be exceeded by humans either by knowledge, by prudence, or by understanding, for any reason, in infancy, youth or old age, except according to your secret providence, which willed to make man for the glory of your name. 26 Words of God on this subject I, O human, knew you before the foundation of the world. Nevertheless, I will to consider your days in your works and judge of their usefulness, and diligently and sharply examine your deeds. But if I suddenly withdraw anyone from this life, the usefulness of his life is complete and if his life were extended longer, it would not keep on in freshness bearing good fruits but, tainted by the faith of the flesh, would only give off smoke like the empty sound of words and not attain to me in the inmost depth of its heart. Therefore I do not grant him a prolongation of this life, but withdraw him from this world before he falls into the apathy of this infertility. But to you, O human, I say, why do you despise me? Did I not send my prophets to you, and give my son on the wood of the cross for your salvation, and choose my apostles to show you the way of truth through the gospel? So, having all good things through me, you cannot excuse yourself. And why then do you put me off? 27. God will no longer tolerate auguries from creatures. But I will no longer tolerate this perverse error, your seeking signs for your actions in the stars or fire or birds or any other creatures, all those who by the devil's persuasion first fell into this error, despised God and threw down his precepts, for which they themselves are despised. But I shine above every creature in the glory of my divinity, and my miracles are manifested to you in my saints, so I wish you not to practice this error of augury any more, but to look toward me. 28. Concerning Human Foolishness and Stubbornness O fool! Who am I? None other than the supreme good. Therefore I grant you all good things when you diligently seek me. And whom do you believe me to be? I am God, above all things and in all things, but you want to treat me as a serf who fears his Lord. How? You want me to do your will, while you despise my precepts. God is not thus. What does this mean? He does not remember a beginning nor fear an end. The heavens contemplate me and resound with my praises and obey me in that justice by which I established them. The sun, moon and stars appear among the clouds of heaven on their proper course, and the blasts of the wind and the rain move through the air as is appointed for them, and all do the bidding of their Creator. But you, O human, do not fulfill my precepts, but follow your own will, as if for you the law's justice were neither established nor manifested. And although you are but ashes, you are in such a state of contumacy that the justice of my law does not suffice for you, though it is ploughed and cultivated in the body and blood of my Son and well trodden out by my saints of the Old and New Testaments alike. 29. Analogy of the Goat, the Heart and the Wolf But in your great foolishness you wish to lay hold of me, threatening me and saying, If God wants me to be just and good, why does he not make me righteous? Wishing to catch me like this is as if a wanton goat wished to catch a heart it would be thrown back and pierced by the heart's strong horns. So, when you try to behave wantonly and play with me, I too will crush you in my just judgment by the precepts of the law as if by my horns. These trumpets resound in your ears, but you do not. Follow them you run off after the wolf, which you think you have so mastered that it cannot hurt you. But the wolf will devour you, saying, This sheep strayed from the road and did not want to follow its shepherd but ran after me therefore I will to have it, for it chose me and forsook its shepherd. O oh, human! God is just so everything he does in heaven and earth is justly ordained. 30. Analogy of the Physician I am the great physician of all diseases and act like a doctor who sees a sick man who longs to be cured. What does this mean? If the illness is slight, he cures it easily, but if it is serious, he says to the sick person, I require silver and gold from you. 
If you will give them to me, I will help you. I too, O oh human, do this. Lesser sins I wipe away in people's groans and tears and good resolutions, but for graver faults I say, O oh human, apply yourself to penitence and amendment, and I will show you my mercy, and give you eternal life. You shall not scrutinize the stars and other creatures about future events, or adore the devil, or invoke him or ask him anything. For if you seek to know more than you ought to know, you will be deceived by the ancient seducer. The first man sought more than he should have sought, and was deceived by him and went to perdition. But the devil did not foresee the redemption of man, when the son of man slew death and broke hell asunder. The devil at first conquered man through the woman but God at last crushed the devil through the woman who bore the son of God, who wondrously brought the works of the devil to naught as my beloved John testifies, saying, 31. Words of John For this reason the Son of God appeared, that he might destroy the works of the devil, 1 John 3 verse 8. What does this mean? The great brightness, the Son of God, appeared for the health and salvation of humanity, taking on the poverty of a human body, but shining like a burning star amid shadowy clouds. He was placed on the wine press, where wine was to be pressed out without the dregs of fermentation, because he the cornerstone fell upon the press and made such wine that it gave forth the greatest odor of sweetness. He, shining as a glorious human being amid the human race, without any admixture of polluted blood, trod with his warlike foot upon the head of the ancient serpent he destroyed all the darts of his iniquity, full of rage and lust as they were, and made him utterly contemptible. Therefore, whoever has knowledge in the Holy Spirit and wings of faith, let this one not ignore my admonition, but taste it, embrace it and receive it in his soul.